Good morning, welcome, and thanks so much for joining us. I hope that you've had a great week and that everyone is keeping safe and well at the moment. And it's great that you have joined us today for our all age worship service. And even though we're in different places, we can still come together to worship God as a church. And that is what we're doing right now. So I'm going to pray for us as we start our service together. Let's pray. God, thank you that we can meet together in this way. Please meet with us today, we ask. And may you enable us to allow your Holy Spirit uh, to speak to us, uh, to bless us, and to change us to be more like Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. We're now going to play a game called What Would You Do? I'm going to show you some situations you might find yourself in and you need to choose what you would do in those situations. Got it? Okay, let's start. The first situation is that you win first prize in a competition. What would you do? Would you A, do a little dance to celebrate? Would you B, gloat over the people that you beat? Or would you C, share your prize with your friends? What would you do? The second situation is that you have an exam coming up. What would you do in that case? Would you A, study hard? Would you B, put your feet up and relax? Would you see, worry about it all the time? What would you do? The next situation is that your friends throw you a surprise party. What would you do then? Would you look shocked and surprised because you didn't see it coming? Would you laugh and enjoy the surprise? Or would you get annoyed because you really don't like surprises? What would you do? The next situation is that you get some bad news. What would you do then? Would you A, sit by yourself and feel sad? Would you B, put on a smile and pretend that everything's okay? Or would you C, talk it through with a friend? What would you do? Our final situation is you get a phone call from a friend. What would you do about that? Would you answer it because you love getting phone calls? Would you ignore it because you hate getting phone calls? Or would you call them back later when it's a better time? What would you do? Well, there are no right answers to all those different situations, but you know, some answers might be a little bit better than others. There are different things that we can do in different situations, but there is one thing we can do in every situation. I wonder, do you know what that is? Well, the answer is that we can talk to God. We can pray. Our Bible verse for today says, Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. And you know, sometimes things are good, and other times things are bad. Sometimes we're happy, sometimes we're sad. But whatever we face, we can pray and we can talk to God. So, no matter what, pray. loves me this I know for the Bible tells me so little ones to him belong they are weak but he is strong yes Jesus loves me yes Jesus loves me yes Jesus loves me me 
The reading today is taken from Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. Today I want to talk to you about the importance of praying and why we should pray no matter what. As a Christian, life is never easy and never more so when we are zealous for the Lord. The more our service for the Lord is honoured by God, the more difficult things become in many ways. We face circumstances of various kinds, some of them great, like passing your exams, getting married, and some of them bad, like losing a loved one, becoming ill, and so forth, and some of them confusing where you just don't understand what's going on. A bit like what we discussed in our introduction activity. Because of this, it is important that we pray no matter what. But what is prayer? Well, prayer is talking to God. It is a two-way form of communication that we use to build a relationship with Him. In today's society, we have many forms of communications. How about you take some time to think about a few? Now, if you look at the screen, you'll see a few here. We have a phone, a laptop, music, poetry, and more. These are all different ways we can communicate and grow in our relationships with one another. As Christians, when we want to communicate with God, we pray. You can pray anywhere at any time. It is important though that you pray no matter what. So how do we pray? There's no special way of praying. Some people praise God by singing and dancing. A great example of this is King David in the book of Psalms. Others cry to God when they are sad, and others sit there in silence and have a moment with God. When Jesus was with his disciples, they asked him how to pray. Now he could have responded, they need to go in a room, get down on their knees, put their hands together, close their eyes and pray, but he didn't. What he actually did was give them a sample prayer. He said to them, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives. 
He who seeks finds, and to him who knocks the door will be opened. So in short, Jesus said, just do it. When we come to church, we talk a lot about prayer, don't we? When someone is sick, we say, we should pray for the sick. When someone is having financial problems, we say, we should pray for the poor. When there is a war, we say, we need to pray for peace. We talk a lot about prayer, but what we really need to do is just do it. Maybe you've heard that phrase before. I wonder if you can guess where. That phrase was introduced by the popular brand Nike, which I'll show on the screen here. They are in the business of making sportswear and their motto is, don't talk about it, just do it. And that is the mentality we should have when we pray. Don't overthink it, but just do it. Just like how you would talk to your closest family and friends about a happy or sad moment, is how we should talk to God. So even if it seems as if our world is crashing down around us, we should pray no matter what. We pray for affliction, we pray through the joy, and we pray for patience. Lastly, we need to listen for God. Prayer is a two-way form of communication. That means when you pray to God, we listen for his answers. I think sometimes it's easy to think that God doesn't hear our prayers. Sometimes it seems like he doesn't always do what we ask him to do. The truth is though, that he always hears our prayers. He doesn't always answer our prayers in the way that we think he should though. Sometimes we have to look and listen very carefully to see the ways that God is helping us. It is sometimes hard to stop and listen because our lives are so busy. It's even harder to listen for God. I'm going to do a quick activity with you guys to show you that you can see things even with your eyes closed. This will show you how to listen to God and how to look hard to see how God is at work in our lives. In this activity, you will listen to six different sounds and you have to guess what they are. You can either close your eyes or you can look at the screen. So, are you ready? It was a book. This is the sound that it makes when you turn the pages. Now for the next sound. It was a pencil on paper. Did you get that right? Well, let's look for the next sound. This sound was a piece of scrunched up paper. Did you get it right? On to the next sound. This is the sound that it makes when you dial the numbers on a phone. On to the next sound. This is the sound of coins in a jar. Did you get that right? Congratulations if you did. On to the last.
This was the sound of two glasses coming together. Hopefully you enjoyed the activity and it got you to think a little bit and to stop and listen. When we stop and listen, we can recognize what different sounds are. This can be the same when we pray to God and we stop and listen for what he's trying to tell us. As you can see from this activity, if we stop and listen, we can hear from God more clearly. To round it up, it is important to pray no matter what. God wants to hear from you and build a relationship with you, no matter what circumstances you may be going through. He also speaks to us and cares about every moment in our lives. We just have to stop and listen. Now why don't we say a prayer real quickly? Let us pray together. Father, thank you that you are my safe place. Thank you that I am always welcome beneath your wings. Thank you for being a fortress that I can trust. Amen. Now as you enter into this week, remember to pray no matter what. Well, I'm here uh, with Sue Jackson, and it's uh, wonderful to be able to see you and to chat to you, Sue. And it's wonderful uh, this week to be able to welcome you back into the staff team and back into your role uh, at HTR. And uh, as many people will have, uh, have noticed or perhaps known, uh, you haven't been around all that much over recent months. And I just wondered if you might want to, to fill us in on, on a little bit of why that is. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Dan. Um, I'm very excited uh, to be coming back this week. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, it was in um, at the end of April last year that I got some uh, shocking news, unexpected news that um, I was going to need some surgery. I was going to have to have an operation, um, and 
subsequently I was going to need some uh, treatments, which meant I was going to go in and out of hospital quite a lot over the following months. And uh, after that, I've had some time uh, for recovery. So that's why I haven't been around. Well, it's lovely to be able to, to see you more often now and to be able to uh, have you back around uh, in in church and in different things that we're going to be doing so that's great but it's a it's a really tricky a really difficult thing that you've uh, you've been through and our bible verse today talks about being patient in affliction and i just wondered as you look back over the last what is it 10 months or something like that um how have you been able to be patient through all that well uh yes uh i think uh when I thought about this verse and thinking about patience in affliction, I just thought actually being patient sounds like it's a very passive thing, a thing where you're like sitting in a waiting room or you're, you're waiting for that envelope to come through the letterbox. You're just waiting and doing nothing. But I believe we're called uh, to be um, active in, in patience and the way to be active in patience for me, while, um, having to attend uh, hospital visits was to pray and that was the one thing I could be active in where I wasn't able to be physically active. Excellent and um, what what has what has sustained you how have you how have you thought about uh, keeping close to God in the midst of all of that and, and, and enabling patience through that as well? Well, it's, it's been a, a really um, interesting time where, uh, to start with, I almost found it difficult to read. Um, mm. And I think that was part of the um, effects of the treatments I was having. Um, so I wanted to read the Bible, but um, as some of uh, you may know that are watching this, um, I ran a club um, pre-lockdown, it seems like so long ago, um, called Glow, where we would give out memory verses in order to help us remember the Bible passage for that week and to take it home and ideally remember them. And um, when um, I uh, thought about that, I thought suddenly these memory verses became so important to me. Um, um, and just an example here, just because, you know, children's pastor. Um, some of you may have things like magnets um, and this one has got a Bible passage on it from Isaiah and I was recalling the time, um, it was the last all-age service when we were thinking about in Romans 9 about clinging to what is good and it reminded me of like I don't know if any of you have got magnets at home but um, this is a fridge magnet here and um, I've got some of these really strong magnets that my son gave me. And they are so strong. They cling. They literally cling. I almost can't pull them off. They actually cling. You can't make them drop off. And I've got these other fridge magnets that have been given to me with memory verses on. And I found a lot of glow memory verses as well. And there were times when I, my prayer was just at one that was very simple and it was help. And it was extraordinary how many times I would suddenly get a, a message through from somebody with a, a, a verse from the Bible. Um, that was one way that I felt I was able to be patient in the waiting. And um, another thing that I did, Dan, um, was I started um, a sort of a prayer journal or a prayer diary um, that I would write in every evening. And... Um, uh, when I say prayer journal, it sounds really, really fancy, but it's not fancy. It's really a notebook. But actually what I love to do in it is I love to um, thank God. I love to praise God. And it might be a one sentence. It might be just thank you, God. Um, and then I like to um, write down my prayers for the, for the day and give thanks to him during that. And in many ways, as I sort of reflect back on that, I see answered prayers as I've been praying for other people. I've seen prayers answered for myself, but mostly I just look at it and I just think that has sustained me. And it's almost taken the thoughts off myself 
um, and on to Jesus and just being so thankful for him. So I think that's an example of sort of like clinging, clinging to him. I felt like I was clinging to him. And on the times when I couldn't almost cling to him, it was amazing how, thank you, Holy Trinity Church family, you would send me messages, my family would send me verses. And so that was a way that I felt I could persist in prayer. Excellent. And, and that, that verse that we've been looking at links together that patience in affliction with being faithful in prayer. And it's really, it's really helpful to hear how those two things have, have gone together for you, that the, uh, the, the patience in affliction has been helped by being faithful in prayer. Uh, and so thank you for, for sharing that. And uh, uh, we continue to pray for you and continue to, uh, to pray that you grow in strength and grow in God. So why don't we uh, pray now? Why don't we, I, if I can pray for you, that'd be great. Heavenly Father, thank you for keeping Sue going. Thank you for her patience in the midst of the last 10 months or so and all the, the things that have gone on. And we thank you for her faithfulness in prayer and the way that you have kept her going through her prayer life. Thank you for that uh, prayer journal notebook. Thank you for those memory verses. And thank you for that image of clinging to you in the midst of everything that goes on. So I pray that you continue to build up Sue's strength and continue to help each one of us be patient in affliction and faithful in prayer. Amen. So today we're going to pray using our hands. Each finger on our hand will represent someone we'll be praying for. And maybe as you're praying, why don't you try to think what each person might be going through or circumstances that they might be facing at the moment. Now we need to keep our eyes open for this prayer because you need to be able to see your fingers. Let's put up our hand. The first finger is the closest finger to you. It's your thumb. So when we hold up our thumb, it reminds us to pray for those people that are closest to us. That is our family, which could be a mum or a dad or a sister or a brother or cousins or aunties, any extended family. Let's take a moment now to pray for those people that are closest to us. Our next finger is our index finger. It is used for pointing. Let this finger remind you to pray for those that point you in the right direction. This could be our teachers at school. It could be the people who teach us at church. And it could also be our pastor, our vicar, Dan. Let's take a moment now to pray for all of those people. Our next finger is our tallest finger, and this finger reminds us to pray for our leaders. That is our prime minister and other leaders in government, 
and our leaders in our cities and in our towns. Let's take a moment to pray for those people now. Our fourth finger is called our ring finger. Did you know that this is actually the weakest of all our fingers? Just ask anybody who plays the piano or another musical instrument and they'll tell you it is the truth. So let this finger remind us to pray for those who might be sick or ill at the moment. Let's take a moment now to pray for anyone we know or anyone we don't know who might be sick or ill at the moment. Our next finger is our smallest finger. The Bible says, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to. And so let this finger remind you to pray for yourself. Let's take a moment now to talk to God and ask him for something for ourselves. Let's end by praying the Lord's Prayer all together using some actions. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us for, from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Romans chapter 12 verse 12 Be joyful in hope Patient in affliction Faithful in prayer Joyful in prayer? No, that's not right. Affliction? Nope, doesn't fit. 
so let's try our last one. Joyful in hope. Perfect. Patient in prayer. Nope. So that just leaves affliction. Patient in affliction. You should be faithful in prayer. Romans chapter 12 verse 12. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction and faithful in prayer.
Well, sadly, our time together is almost at an end, but there is just time left for a few notices. Thank you to everyone who has completed a response form following our Giving Sunday service back on the 17th of January. If you haven't yet completed your form, we would love you to do so, and we'd like everyone to do so, even if you're not planning to change your giving. On the subject of giving, back at Christmas, as a church, we were able to support the Angel Tree Project, and that meant that across the country, it allowed over 4,000 gifts to go out from prisoners to connect with their families. So thank you so much for your generosity. We are now in Lent, and Niku has written a terrific set of devotions for us to use as a church, and it's not too late to sign up for those. The address is on the screen, and you can also follow the link from our website. And you can sign up to receive these devotions via email, or if you prefer a printed copy, do let us know in the church office. And on the subject of reopening church, we're continuing to keep an eye on the situation with COVID and working out when it's safe and sensible to reopen in-person services, both on a Sunday and also for our Wednesday service. For the moment, we have decided to keep our services online only for the time being, up to and including the Sunday the 7th of March. And we'll monitor the situation closely and hope to open our doors once again when the time is right. One of the other things that we're looking at is that we're beginning to form a group to help Holy Trinity become a greener and more sustainable church. And if you'd be interested in joining that group or knowing more, then please email Penny Cox. You will find her email address in the weekly update or ask the church office if you need any further assistance. Finally, we're thrilled to share that Traycraft finished last year with excellent sales, and so they're in a much better place than they were at the beginning of last year. And you can go to their website to sign up for their mailing list, download their bulletin, and shop from their spring catalogue. Please also let us know if you would be interested in joining in an evening Zoom called Live Fair for Lent. Matt Oliver from Tradecraft will be presenting a number of slides with ideas for doing something for Lent, products, producer stories and facts about Tradecraft. But we need to book him as soon as possible, so please express your interest, particularly if you are interested in being involved, to the church office by Wednesday the 24th of February, that's this coming Wednesday, and we'll book him based on his availability. Well thank you so much for joining us today and being part of Church Together. And I hope you've had fun, I hope you've learnt a lot, and I hope above all that you have met with God this morning. So I wonder, what has God been saying to you as we've met together? And what are you going to do as a result of what we've heard? Why not talk to someone about what you've heard, what you've learnt, what you're going to do at some point today? But for now, uh, let me finish our service uh, by leading us in saying the grace together. So please join with me as we say... May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. Have a great week and see you all soon.